We hear it all the time. The most cinematic lens money can buy. How I found the most cinematic lens for a nickel at a grocery store. Well, today, I'm talking about one. This is the most cinematic lens for under $100. Hit it! What's up everybody? My name is Caleb Bronco. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in South Florida. And today, we are talking about one of the most cinematic lenses for under $100. It is no secret that lenses these days are ridiculously expensive. Like mortgage your house expensive. Especially these RF lenses can go upwards of like $3,000. And they're just photo lenses. They can be used for video, but they're designed to be photo lenses. You feel? And then when you start getting into cinema lenses, that's just through the roof. So what would you say if I told you there was a lens that was built over 40 years ago that can get insanely cinematic footage for under $100? Sounds pretty enticing, doesn't it? It's over here. So this is the SMC Tacomar 50 millimeter F1.4. I've had this thing for a little over a year now and I absolutely love it. I've even used it on a few client projects and they even like the look of it. So there you go. Also for a 50 millimeter 1.4, this thing is tiny. Before we get into a bunch of specs, let's talk about history. This lens was designed to compete with the Carl Zeiss 50 millimeter 1.4 of the time. And it really was kind of like a Ford versus Ferrari kind of situation. They basically just told their team to make a better 50 millimeter than Zeiss had. Uh, and apparently they ended up losing money on every single lens that they sold. That was mainly for the earlier models of it though. Uh, and this is one of the later ones. One thing that you're gonna immediately notice about this lens is the build of it. And it is, it is solid. This thing is built like a tank. It is like all metal. It feels like you could throw it down a flight of stairs and it would be fine. Don't do that, but you probably could. There's absolutely a reason why these lenses are still around today. They, they really do stand the test of time. So being a lens from over 40 years ago, uh, there's obviously no autofocus, which means you have to pull focus manually. Uh, which also means these lenses are amazing for video, for more professional video work, um, if you've ever, done that, pulling focus. If you don't know how to pull focus, you should probably learn. Everybody should know how to pull focus if they plan on doing video. But the focus on this thing is buttery smooth. The size is also another factor. I've just started taking this thing everywhere with me. You just toss it in your bag, you don't even know that, that it's there, and you have a great 50 millimeter that it opens up to 1.4. Last year, I took this lens to the fair with my girlfriend to kind of like test it out, make a cool little compilation video, see how I liked it, and Blown away, blown away. This is the first Takamar lens that I bought. Uh, so I wanted to kind of test the waters with something more on the cheaper end. Um, and now I have an, an entire set of them. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> the look that this lens has is amazing. It's still clinically sharp, but it has kind of a little glow to like the highlights and it just, it looks so good. The sharpness obviously falls off a little bit um, in the corners, uh, but good luck finding a vintage lens that doesn't do that wide open. But even, even if you stop this thing down to F4, it sharpens right up. And it flares beautifully too. I don't know how to describe it. It just, it looks cinematic. It just, it looks like you're watching a movie on a camera and lenses that cost way more than this thing do. You hear this all the time in lens review videos, but it, it has almost like a filmic look to it. It really takes the like edge off the digital sensor and just really makes it look like film. It kind of smooths everything out, makes it kind of imperfect. It has a really great kind of vintage look without being too overpowering or being too clinically sharp like every modern lens is. And that's why you'll see tutorials all over YouTube about how to make your like iPhone footage or your Canon footage like look like Super 8 film or look like film or blah, 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 blah. There's a reason that everyone's trying to emulate this. And what better way to emulate it than just to use what they used back in the day. Another amazing point about this lens uh, is how easy it is to adapt to almost any system at all. It has, an M it has an M42 mount, which if you don't know, is just a screw mount here at the back. And it is known to be one of the most adaptable mounts ever. Almost all of my lenses back here are, are M42. You basically just wanna look up M42 to whatever mount you're using. This is an M42 to EF mount. Um, I'll link it down down below. Uh, but they're they're super cheap. It's like eight to ten bucks for these. You just put it on the back, spin this thing on, and then you have an then you have an EF mount, and you can just leave this thing on too if you want. Because since they're only like ten bucks, if you have a bunch of these lenses, just get a bunch of these mounts, screw it on, pop a cap on, 
done. And now it's an EF mount. The craziest thing is, is you can get these lenses for under a hundred dollars. Uh, I think I found mine for like 80 bucks, like a, like a year ago. Um, and they haven't gone up much since then. They are going up though. Vintage lenses are going off the rails right now um, for obvious reasons. They look cool, but you can still you can still get these for under a hundred dollars. You can get them for like eighty bucks, and that's for one in like mint condition. If you don't mind one with a few scuffs here or there, you can probably get them for like sixty, seventy. So yeah, all I can say is I highly suggest you check out this lens. Um, I'll leave some links um, for some eBay listings down below. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, greatly appreciated. It. it really helps me out. And uh, drop some comments down below. Um, let me know if you're interested in this lens. Uh, let me know if you have any other vintage lens suggestions that I should check out. Um, I would love to hear those. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next one.